Yeah, I, I, I assure you I'm not a deep fake, but of course a deep fake would say that, wouldn't they? <laughs> so um, we, th this was, I, I was asked to do a dialogue and a dialogue will do. So I'm, I'm not going to show any slides. I'm going to basically allow the conversation to go where it is. But I've got a few things to share with you along the way. Uh, key points um, will break off when, when it seems a good idea. We'll break off and have an, an, and have a breakout or two. Um, and I'm very open to suggestions in the chat from anybody to say, can we have a can we have a, um, um, a breakout on on X or Y? Um, uh, and, uh, and and Nicola will, will then try and fit you in, into, into rooms um, as quickly as she, as she can to do that. I wish I could say that I was speaking. No, I'm not sure I wish I could say, but I'm, 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 I'm not speaking as an expert, but more as somebody who's been following this whole debate for a long time. And the fact that I produce a number of academic articles and other articles around it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm an expert it just means that I have a strong interest in what's happening um, and the potential of AI um, and associated technologies to change the way that we operate as coaches, mentors and supervisors. And I'm mentioning all three because it will affect all three um, disciplines. Some of the questions <clears throat> that we the key questions that we have. So the, f the first one that comes to my mind is basically um, just what is AI? How does it work? What, what can and can't it do? Um, secondly, who's a threat? Um, is it a threat? Uh, um, and in what ways is it a threat to them? This, the ne next, I, I thought we'd look at what a good coach AI partnership would look like. How do we work well with this, with this new technology so that, so that, we really do have a genuine partnership and the, AI, the, the technology doesn't manage us. It's, it's one of those, those questions that keeps occurring. You know, um, if, if the robot does better what you, could, what you can do, who's the robot? Um, and, and so there are some real challenges there about how much of our independence, our creativity, our thinking we hand over to the bot to, to the bots. Now I'm going to use the words bot, AI, and and um, and other terms interchangeably um, as we go along. And the last thing I thought we'd just share some things is how this is going to change the nature of supervision. Um, and we have some scenarios around this, but they but they do actually take us into some interesting areas with some ethical um, dimensions to them. So if we if if we if we just start there i think i'd like to do is a quick poll to see where you all are so um could we launch the cop of the poll please there we go wow i feel honest because i can see the results already but it's all a mystery to everybody else in the room at the moment Absolutely. I'm, I'm, if you see me get, the reason i'm saying wow is because because we're seeing the results um and we've got um um over 200 results out of 218 so I think um, we're probably okay to end that one now, then, do you reckon? We might do, yes. Well, Sorry, the last 14, oh, 13 people of you who didn't get... Oh, hang on, there's another couple. No, here we go, let's end it now. Ready? There you go. Share well, results. Um, as this is a dialogue, I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to pass it back to you. What, do they, what does this tell you? As a little old lady said when they asked her what... NT was many years ago. I think it's something to do with computers, but with a bit of luck, I'll get out of this world without having to face it. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, we're not going to get out of this world without having to face it. Yeah, um, I, I think um, I think this, this is this is quite remarkable, and it's not, and and there is a reason that that I think we have some concerns about AI. And that is because AI by its nature is inhuman. And what we do as coaches, mentors and supervisors is emphasize our humanity. Um, and it's all about and, and the, the, the maturity research that we've been doing over the last few years emphasizes this, too. It's not what coaches do or mentors do. It's who it's the, it's the, it's the presence that they bring. The tools and techniques that you have don't actually matter. Um, or the pro or the process that you follow doesn't matter that much. It's the person that comes that, that, that creates the trust and the psychological safety and and, and help and, and helps somebody else um, access their own wisdom. 
um, you know, what we're here for is, 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 as, as professionals is to help the person in front of us have the conversation they need to have with themselves. And we're just creating the basket <clears throat> for them to have that conversation. Um, what, where, so an AI um, can, in theory, support it. Or there are many ways in which an AI might support us. There's also lots of ways in which an AI might make that much more difficult. And so, you know, the, the, those of you who, you, when you when you're on the, when you're on the phone trying to to, to work through the menu, you know, all you want to do is um, is report something to, or, or, or buy something, buy a ticket for something. So, yeah, if you're calling about X, uh, or, um, press one. If you're calling about Y, press you know, et cetera, and then you and um, and then you get another menu and another menu and the, and then and and then and then you get you you find that um, that basically you're going back round in circles and in, and the net last set of menus doesn't actually match anything you want. We've all been there. Um, technology can be really frustrating. Um, and many of the applications that we've seen um, arising around um, uh, where where AI has been used to do what coaches or mentors and supervisors used to do are intensely irritating. And one of those, for example, is the replacement of questionnaires with, um, with, with, a, with a bot that asks the same questions, but then calculates all the answers and so forth. The problem with that is that, there's, that, that that a human being would be listening in to the answers that somebody gives and get when somebody's a bit hesitant you know, exactly. or, or there's something else that comes that, that you want that you feel well, that would be interesting to dig into. The AI, if it's not programmed to do it, won't do it. That doesn't mean to say we can't train AIs to be that to be more sensitive in that way. It just means that we haven't done it and it will take a long time before we can. Our human intuition is a really important part of the whole package. When we look at the coach bot, we, I can define four different kinds of coach bot. You've got the, 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 the well, or, or of AI rather. So you've got a coach bot, which is the, the basic thing. So that takes a human algorithm and humans are algorithms. Yeah, you know, Even the, the actions of our cells are basically, um, they're algorithms. They work, they, they, they work in the same way or roughly the same way. What a, a coach bot does is to apply the algorithms, as in the questionnaire, using questionnaires, more consistently than we would. Um, so it's just a tool. That's the role. If we want a basic AI, that has the, the distinction factor here is that whereas the, the bot can't really change its routines, the, can't, the bot can't learn, an AI can. Um, the problem is that its learning capacity is limited by the, where it searches. So. Um, if for, if one of the problems with uh, with uh, chat GPT, which can be can produce an awful lot of interesting data, is that it will search that data primarily. Well, it will search for, for the most frequent mentions of something. So if you've got if you've got something which is an urban myth, like a lot of consultant eases, you know, a, lot, a lot of these management models are based on absolutely nothing. Um, but it will reproduce those as if they were the truth because they are more frequently mentioned. So there we've got this, this. So as a human being, we are able to exercise some judgment and ask and, and, and basically question things. We haven't got an AI system that does that yet. Um, and I was just hearing about some of the um, some of the precautions that have been put in place um, by uh, by chat GPT. Um, and um, uh, what they've basically done is to, is to is to limit the responses that the that the, uh, the the machine can make, so that it's not suggesting out, like, outlandish things to you. But that means that everything comes out as, as totally anodyne. Um, so um, if you ask things that are really in, um, that really require some some intellect to be used, so you've got a problem there. If you have an advanced AI that's able to pass the Turing test, now the Tur Alan Turing's test was that can you tell it from a from a human being? Um, uh, would you know which was which? And there've been a number of experiments now, um, uh, not that many, but a, but a handful that, that tell us that actually uh, in a in conversation style, sometimes it can be very difficult. And and very often, knowing the coach from the from the machine, if you're doing basic level coaching, it can be very difficult to tell which is which, and people can get it wrong. Um, 
but <coughs> it is it, it is basically following uh, it has a sort of moderate creativity it predicts human human interaction and, and, and human responses so it sees patterns that will be too too complex or too fleeting for us to see um there are ais that can for example um, um observe what's going on in a session that we have and 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 use the voice patterns that people that people are uh, people have um, um, the tone of voice um and the micro movements of people's face and body to predict their mental state scary we we, we also have we, we also know there are machines you can you can put a cap on now and the, and and that um that will also give you detailed information about what's going on in the person's head the concepts and thoughts that they're having uh, at quite a detailed level um it's really quite weird having one of these things on your head i have to say me measuring measuring um, what's happening so one of my colleagues in in indonesia has been um uh, measuring ex executives um thinking patterns as they solve problems um and looking at, at how at, at, at how um the, the different patterns that leaders have in the way in, in in the way that they think about problems the bits of their brain that they use um and then trying to draw conclusions from this data um about um how they might you might put people together to solve problems more creatively by having multiple you know, multiple brain architectures together lots of potential there all of this is happening in the background but it's still more more of, 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 of a collaborator <coughs> this is where we can have a collaborator um but if we go a little bit further into science fiction now effectively but not maybe not that far away the big th thing that the uh, coach that the advanced ai cannot do is have intentionality it cannot have curiosity it cannot be self-aware um if it does get to that stage then it can become a true partner with us but it'll be a smarter partner than we are so there are all sorts of dangers dangers relating that it may even be able to develop elements of emotional intelligence now i think we're a long way away from that kind of full partnership but in so when we talk about coach ai partnerships now we're talking about collaboration more than anything else um so it, it's no, david if i may you've skipped oh, over a point yeah, sorry peter uh, yeah. you've skipped over a point you, you talked about um ai sort of presenting sort of ethical dilemmas what happens the, the thing that strikes me is probably a bit um sinister is the fact that ai conforms perfectly to the model of a of a psychopath um yes. you've got you've got intelligence without moral boundary um and you've got very much the the attribute of feeding back what you want to hear so you know psychopaths are very good at telling you exactly what you want to hear of um of giving of not giving you signals that you would pick up as being uh, incongruent or anything of that nature so you're going ahead and say how do we partner with this you, if it doesn't have empathy if ai we don't build in moral rules um and you know it reminds me of you know asimov's robot three rules of robotics yeah. but if you don't build in some sort of boundaries like that we're dealing with a psychopath well i think i think there's a there's a there's a flaw in that in that in that argument and that is that a psychopath also has an intentionality they 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 enjoy doing harm to other people they are they they they're all about themselves and their own, own ego and ai they, doesn't have yeah, they they have intentionality but it's it's self gratification there's an yeah. example given recently in ai of um they the, the army's testing a bot now the army will never use ai for killing people of course so um they've got a, a bot set up to um actually uh, pilot a, a drone uh, and the drone's job is to shoot down other aircraft. So they're live testing this thing with an unarmed drone. Um, so the, the drone has to line the target up and then basically you know, carry out the firing exercise. And the problem was that each time the drone lined, and for that it would get a point. So we've just got a mechanism that says you will be rewarded, stimulus response, if you shoot down an aeroplane. Yeah, if you line one up and press a button, that's all you have to do. Each time it lined a plane up, the operator aborted the kill right that went on for about five or six goes in the plane the bot turned around and bombed the operator <laughs> but seriously we're not this isn't science fiction this is real right so that the bots program says 
you need to go out, line this up and press a button. You need to go out, line this up and press a button. Each time it attempted to do that, it was thwarted. It's identified the source of the thwarting and eliminated that source. There wasn't any hate involved, nothing else. But simply that program wasn't a real good one. Whoever designed the program sort of overlooked the possibility. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, that's a lovely example. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. What I'm going to suggest is that actually the, the in, that in a partnership with this, the, the intentionality of the human being is what is what is is what gets added to the to the uh, intellectual capability or the capabilities of of the robot in order to make it positively functional. So what was missing in the example that you've you've just give, given there is the um, the robot did not defer to the human to uh, to to um, to to say well what, what am I doing here why am I doing this what is the purpose here. A human, but and, and therefore that's that's the fault in 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 the program, or well, that's a fault in in the programming. But it's a lovely it's a lovely example that everything you know that, that it, there's a lot of, of of questions out there. There's nothing is that simple. So um, that's why we do need to have partnerships where we co-learn. And in the description, in the example you've given, there was no co-learn co-learning taking place. Um, well, can I just jump in? Because, mm. in fact, what Peter is saying is very like the prison, the Stanford prison exercise. Mm. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and uh, can I just say, having worked with very many therapeutic groups as well, I'm shocked and appalled sometimes at how much projection takes place from so-called professionals. That's one thing I'm going to say. So if you're looking at um, learning, um, as coaches, we're not expected to go into the psychoanalysis, but it's quite extraordinary how many people in the helping profession sometimes don't have self-awareness and are often projecting their own stuff onto the client. So that plus the Stanford experience, prison experiment. So what is the robot actually learning? <laughs> Thirdly, the multicultural aspect of interpreting body language itself. Um, so, I mean, I would see the usefulness very much in terms of pure cognitive question back and forth or getting up to speed on a model or wanting to experiment that way. But the subtleties that are involved are huge. And if it's programmed the wrong way, <laughs> oh, even some humans don't realize, you know, one of the aspects of coaching is actually being willing to, to actually question and check in and out have you got it right or for the other person to stop you know to create that trust for it to happen um incidentally i was involved in troubleshooting um and working on robot um <laughs> business cases gone wrong as early as 2000 <laughs> and oh my god the army were using <laughs> they all the all the test cases and all the customer service ideas around how to manage it an awful lot of them were where uh, robots and ai actually did actually turn on people or actually got out of control and um, so the program actually did develop a fault or whatever anyway it's interesting it's it's hugely it, it's i mean the self-learning thing what is it actually learning i can see the value in the cognitive learning models or testing stuff if you don't want to write you know but the, the subtleties i think are huge really huge and 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 so you're bringing up up there the, the issue if we're co-learning with an with, with an if, if, the, if the ai is learning from us and we are learning from the a from the ai are we reinforcing the in, implicit biases that the that the human has so uh, if the if, if the if the robot tends to see things through your through your biases and prejudices um and your and and and, and, and adopt your blind spots what, how is that going to affect the way that you, you that you work and behave? Um, um, if we program oh. them right or correct in a good way, they can actually challenge your your prejudices. But at the moment, I think the jury is out as to, as to, as to whether that's going to happen. What, what, what you know, how it's going to work, which what, which way it's going to go. Is it actually going to make us worse human beings or better human beings? Um, I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't like to be the person that to make the judgment there. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Tinica. 
David, a question I have, we, we tend to always, you know, you get early adopters and you get laggards and, yeah. you know, new things are introduced. And so the question that uh, I, I would like to ask is, why would we even have a need for AI in our coaching sessions? Was there something lacking in our coaching sessions before that has to be, uh, you know, supplemented by AI? Um, you know, because we, we don't always question necessarily, but do we need this? Uh, it's just it's come and you must find a way of using it. I think AI could be very nice for reflecting after the session, you know, like a Vida, which I want to look at now, to be able to do reflective journaling or, you know, adult experiential learning. I can see the place there, but I, I can't actually myself see a place for it in my coaching sessions. Okay. So I, um... I do not feel that that I need to enhance my imperfect self. My imperfect self is enjoyed by my clients anyway. And, you know, is is to some extent more than good enough, I think, um, mm -hmm. as a coach to my clients, when I bring my whole being to my clients. And yes, I can understand afterwards, I can have a look at it and see what did I miss as I was, you know, so involved and present in the sessions. But why should I even want to create a need in the sessions? Mm -hmm. It's like trying to fix something that ain't broke. <laughs> And I just want to, I'm just, that's what I'm grappling with. And, and, and I think that's a perfectly reason, reasonable perspective to take. And it's one of, and it's one of a number of, of a spectrum of different, different ways we can look at it. Uh, but many coaches might say, well, actually, what I really want, I, I really am, in, I, I really want to, to, to know what things I should be noticing, but I'm not noticing. David, can I give you a practical example of, of answering the question that Winnika asked? Um, so the the way that I coach, um, there's, there's a mixture of you know, coaching and mentoring in there. Uh, so I'm a business coach, an executive coach, um, and I'll resource my clients. So you know, I believe that part of my role is to assist them to change their orientation to a situation etc but often they just lack the the data the information the the learning whatever it is they lack a, a model um so i've got three and a half thousand self-created resources that i've done over the years um i had a coaching session the other day the client had a challenge with the situation i didn't have a a resource for that i would normally sit down and rewrite the write out a resource for a couple of hours as, to enable them to do their self-learning so i'm not standing there teaching them etc um and i thought well let, let's throw it off to i was using perplexity which is an ai bot at the moment yep. chat gpt plus pin um i i said give me in uh, in point form uh, you know, the basis of this particular situation it threw me point form it gave me citations for it a lot I now had a framework. So I then sat down and rewrote it in a space of about 10 minutes from, from my own knowledge. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't rely on anything it said, but it certainly gave me a start. So, and the feedback I've seen from other people using AI is that it's great for drafting. It's great for getting a framework started. Uh, it's great for gathering basic facts. I can then either make a personal judgment based on my experience. I'm old, so I've got enough experience, or I can go and find other sources to check that out. What I am concerned about is the reports now of what they're, they're euphemistically calling hallucinations. And that's yes. not when the bot makes a mistake. It's when it makes something up. I've got a gap. I need to make something up that will fit in this gap. Good is now complete. But in actual, and by the way, it provides citations as well. And when you go and check, it doesn't exist. The bot just made that up to make yeah. a pretty picture for the human being. So I'm going to come back to it without some sort of moral compass, you know, an idea of what's right. Uh, we're screwed and the other thing is the the point you touched on before sorry to jump around but was the the unconscious bias there are examples of ai being used in facial recognition and failing to recognize negro faces in the states because the training group has been white men so yeah. it make it's making multiple mistakes arrest and by the way the, the police then because they're overloaded simply go out based on the bot's advice and arrest someone who's never been guilty of anything because you know, the, the AI's facial recognition said that's a fit, and it's not. Yes. So, yeah, the, 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 we're in an interesting... Yeah, I think the dilemma, that's the, their technical issues, the dilemma that's not going away is unless you equip it with empathy, unless mm -hmm. you equip it with some form of moral guidance or constraints, et cetera, 
and then you have some way of overseeing that before the machine gets away when we go to terminate a model um then i think we're in yeah you know, we've got problems and, and thereby and thereby that is the issue that that we cannot expect certainly in the near future the machine to develop empathy we cannot uh, uh, we cannot expect it to develop it in an ethical sense it cannot develop a whole bunch of things it's simply a number cruncher um and sometimes and, and and therefore we we have to provide this so the key in working with this stuff is how do we provide the thing the human elements to keep this thing and um, to make this thing useful let, let me give you a practical example of how you might use um um an, an ai um, in in a in a coaching session or a mentoring session, um, somebody said, <clears throat> you 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 see that the very it's very clear to you that what's going on here um, is um, that for the client is a drama triangle, and so <clears throat> right so so you 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 say there's a, there's a, there's a model here that that I think might might explain to you what what's going on. Let's work on it together. So you can do this with a sheet of paper, but what you could what but what what the um, what the what the machine can, can can do is actually the moment it hears you say um, drama triangle, it'll flash it up for you. So you can say here yeah, here we are. Look here it is. Let me share this with you. And this is how it works. So you don't need to go through a lengthy explanation. You've got a nice concise explanation that you can give the client and they can take away with themselves. So this immediate response <clears throat> to, to themes and issues that are coming up, you can ignore them or or, or actually use them and say that that that's that's really helpful. So. Um, and it might ask, it might um, in the in the um, in in the pauses, it, it, it might actually show up for you and say, um, "That's interesting." But the client has used this particular phrase six times in the in this conversation, and they also used it several times in the last conversation. Um, you know, and, it, and 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 so not drawing any conclusions from it, just saying, "Interesting." You know, you've got this phrase coming up. Um, and then it's up to you as a coach to make your judgment. Do I pursue that now or do I do I just note it and, and go back over it? So, so it can provide you with lots of lots of, 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 of bits of information that may or may not be useful. But you may you have to make the judgment as to how useful that is. As soon as the as soon as, however, it's the the, 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 the machine starts to say, right, well, you asked that question. Now you should ask this question. Now you've given over control to the machine. Um, and, and that and that, of course, is, is a step too far. So it's, it's how do we manage this balance and still actually and find ways in which it can be useful to us? Yeah, something resonated with me a lot uh, when I think some I think you were saying trying to fix something that ain't broke. And, uh, you know, it reminded me of these S curves, you know, in 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 our human history where where new innovations have come on board. And it's always like, oh, well, we don't need this. It's too expensive. It's too many problems, blah, blah, blah. But of course, over time, these innovations, they, they improve, they get better, they get cheaper. And then, of course, they start being adopted, yeah, uh, you know, by the, by the mainstream. And I think this is going to happen with AI. I'm pretty, I'm pretty convinced that that's my opinion, <laughs> at least. But, but what gets me is, yeah, you know, the values, the principles, you know, these ethical rules, they'll be learned by... Uh, by the by the boards you know and they'll have feedbacks from humans we can make sure that the humans in the loop and uh, and has the kind of final say you know the judgment um but what i think what is um what is kind of really clear for me is that it, it might have better perception in terms of seeing what's going on it can pick up the visuals um for example or hear things that we can't hear maybe smell things that we can't smell what you know in terms of perception fantastic you know augmented um however when it comes to the feelings and the and emotions it can pick up the facial uh cues but it doesn't have emotions of itself and, yeah. and i think that I mean, and it will have an intelligence, so it has some sort of thinking thoughts, uh, just like we do, you know. Uh, but we will never, because of the it not having emotions, it's not able to have the same level of contact that we have with other human beings. I think that for me is, I mean, it just can't get there because it just doesn't have emotions itself, and and so it's 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 limited in its field of consciousness, if you uh, if you want to put it that way. It doesn't have a consciousness. I mean, the the um, the um, the architecture of a thought 
in a human brain is far, far more complicated than the architecture of a, of a calculation in a, in, a, in, a, in a machine, far more so. I, I have this little, um, I don't know whether it's nightmare scenario, scenario but this um, futuristic scenario um, where where the coach and the and the coach coachee, um, for example, are both wearing the, the the wire meshes that actually measure what's going on in your brain, and the coach saying to the to, to the client, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And the AI coming saying, "Yes." <laughs> um, I think that's scary. I really do. Um, but it's but, David. But, David, if I may, the point you just made then right uh, nails what Andrew said. I've got a client who is one of the most charming people you'd ever make a meet. He's an extremely gifted uh, uh, scientist, so um, a very, very good technician, if you like. Um, and he's an Asperger's, in fact, edging onto autistic. And uh, that only came to the fore in conversation with him uh, you know, after I'd been dealing with him for quite some time. He's the most charming person you'd ever meet. And he's self-diagnosed because his child's autistic. And after going through the exercise with his child, he's then gone through the tests himself. And sure enough, he's deep in the Asperger's uh, uh, spectrum. Um, I said, so, David, you handle it really well. And he said, yeah, I've learned learned the cues. So he simply recognises in others um, you know, a, a certain thing that he's supposed to respond in a certain way with. And he's, he's, he is the most charming person. I'm a coach. I'm fairly aware. Um, there's nothing sinister in David. He's a very nice guy. But he obviously is missing a piece that I operate with, or we say we operate with. Um, he doesn't have that. Um, it hasn't caused him to cross any moral boundaries that I'm aware of. But he's certainly not processing in the way that you and I think we are, um, <laughs> and he's not processing in the way that we think he is until you know that information comes to the fore. So Andrew's observation: you know, the I, I believe that bots will get to the point where we can't tell. Because we just, you know, it's got a much larger data set than I have, so you know, it's smart enough to mask that. And we're talking now in the psychopathy. You know, this is this is the psychopath. Why, you know, uh, without getting political, why is Donald Trump believed by half of America? Because he doesn't give any signals mm. that say he's lying. There's no body language disconnect between his words and his, you know, his manner. He simply believes what he's saying. Uh, you know, it's a that's a classical definition of psychopathy. What happens when the bot's doing the same to us and we're working with it? We've got to go and double check everything. I'm not saving any time now if I have to go and check the massive information it gave me. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. there, have, there have been some suggestions. So you actually need two bots um, that, that, that program in different ways to, 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 to question each other. I'm not really sure whether that, how that will work. But you know, heaven knows. We, we, we don't know. I mean, so much of so, so much which we simply do not know. Um, so we had that we had the poll. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, so yeah. are you? And then um, we've got Elizabeth, and then Phil's hands up. And I think did um, there's another one as well. So what I'd say as well um, is pop your hand up from here on in because there'll be loads of people wanting to jump in. So just pop your hand up, and then David can take you in order. Then is that all right, everybody? Mm -hmm. Super duper. Over to the poll. Can you all see it? Okay. So that, again, very very interesting. Um, so, but uh, you know. Nearly a quarter of people are actually using some form of AI. Um, and what conclusion we draw from that? Well, it's 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 actually more than I expected, which is great. Which is, I think, it, we, we're we're at least experimenting with. We're not afraid to play with it. Um, and um, and yet, I'm, I'm you know, what would suggest this? We're still, yeah, you know, we're still having a sense of wariness, a, a, a correct sense, I think, a justified sense of, of wariness of all of this stuff and where and where it's going. Let, let's have let's have a, a a few more people come in. Um, so uh, Elizabeth, you were first there. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Actually, I wanted to respond to um, Tineke's point, the question she had a bit uh, mm -hmm. earlier about why would she use uh, coaching uh, or AI in her coaching. And I, I just thought about one of the sessions in the EMCC Global GPS, uh, and that was from Simon Isaacson, and he was talking well, about yeah. tech. Yeah. yeah, it was a great session. Um, and what I really found interesting uh, in relation to her question is the fact that actually what will happen is that our clients, our coaches themselves will uh, 
presenters with questions about AI or you know the, we have the AR and they have to use it because they want they don't like Zoom anymore but they want a more uh, complete experience of uh, the, the you know the classes that you have to yeah. like your yeah. exactly so it's not so much maybe uh, our own choice but it's also just going to happen uh, and I might think of Zoom when it started first a lot of coaches didn't want to coach online. But not everybody's online. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of time. Thank you. I mean, so there's an analogy we use, you know, the, the, the AI is just like, ele like, like being like electricity. You know, when, 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 when you first plugged in electricity, electricity you, you, you could easily get, get electrocuted. Um, um, yes. um, you know, so you have to protect yourself against it and use it wisely. But it's, it's, it can be incredibly useful. You know, we, we, how, what, how would we, work, we live today without electricity? So um, yeah. that, that's, that analogy is, is quite a good one, I suspect. Um, uh, it's, but, but it's a case of how do we learn how to do it? And particularly in the context of being a coach, mentor or supervisor, how do we use it there? And, and I think for me, one of the, 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 the problems that we are already seeing is that we're getting um, AI literate coaches working with AI literate clients, but being supervised by supervisors who, who who are basically saying no 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 not for me, um, and 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 so that so we we you know we, we need to go all the way through the chain of uh, responsibility here in terms of how do we collectively um, and along the chain um, understand the 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 implications of working in this way. Yes. Yes. Please. Thank you. Yeah. And. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, so my concern is slightly different, David. I, I've sat through lots of webinars, seen exam working examples, um, and um, uh, looking and learning from Marshall Goldsmith's uh, Marshall bot that he's setting up, yeah. where where he he's put, he says, a million words into this in the first place. So that's all very well. We've got a, a learning curve, wrongly named, a generative curve. He's put a million words in. So when his people start using that, they're using Marshall's words, thoughts, mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah. In in a few weeks' time, a few months' time, years' time, what percent? What controls are going in? What controls are in place to maintain a reasonable standard of human belief uh, versus pure generation because if there's not controls then in in a very very short space of time and we're not talking years here um a million words will be a tiny proportion of the total data that's believed by people yeah well, if you were to ask, if you were to ask Marshall today um, about a particular thought that he's had or a con idea you had, yeah. how, Marshall, how did you get to that idea or that conclusion? Mm -hmm. He could work back through his brain and tell you, hopefully. Yes. Um, you ask an AI, how did you come to that conclusion? And it hasn't got a clue. No. Well, but that that's reasonably easy to detect when it's text or spoken word but as i'm sure you know marshall's uh, marshall bot is video text speech yeah. and his daughter uh, and he's very close to his daughter his his daughter was watching the uh, the the first test of this um, and after 2 minutes which is a hell of a long time she said that's not you dad is it because yeah. she was watching the bot. Um, yeah. w once we've got video and text and words and everything else wrapped in there, the credibility goes up enormously. Yeah. Um, and and some, of, well, some of the emotions that come through too, the, the projection of emotion. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you do that? Um, and there have been some suggestions that you, that, that, um, the actors are very concerned, not just because somebody can reproduce them as a, as a, as a, as a the, the image of themselves and their voice and, and, and so forth, 
but actually to um, um, to to learn the emotional expressions and the ways that they, that they individually project emotions. You 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 can already put that on top of somebody's somebody's um, deep fake. And, and that was something that his daughter, Marshall's daughter, said. You laugh a lot. You haven't laughed in two minutes. Yeah, um, it can't be you. And the the um, the guys in India building this system for him uh, came on and said, "Good point. We'll put that in." Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, but, you know, I mean, if you look at being 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 slightly cynical, um, you know, there is a possibility that that uh, that that, that, you, that we we could all as coaches have have a whole stream of and be doing ten different coaching sessions um, with different clients at the same time. <laughs> Um, and just popping in um, and, and monitoring that everything's going okay from time from time to time, just to keep just to keep an eye on it. But but doing these these uh, these things um, completely separately. Um, I have to say that I I wrote a piece a, a spoof piece um, about being a, about uh, giving giving speeches and lectures and workshops. Um, um, in this in this way in 1990 no 1988 well um before we had to any of this but, but when we were just uh, but you know it was just something that, that came out of some work, work we were doing that uh, that we were we, some, some science that we, we managed to stumble across it's hilarious i mean it's it's amazing that these ideas anything that we can identify can dream up is probably possible now in this in this this context Wow. Okay, S uh, Saren, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, there's loads I could say on this. I just think it's a fascinating topic. But I suppose one of my concerns is that companies who are looking to cut costs and maybe don't understand coaching, maybe think it's more about problem solving, um, would look to, you know, you know, use AI to replace um, human coaches when, when in fact, you know, I mean, if I think about the reason I would go into coaching is I want a relationship with somebody. You know, I want someone to validate. I want another human being to validate me. I don't want to speak to a robot. And I just, and that is, the, you know, I would say that's the case with many of the people I work with. So I just wondered what your view is on that and whether, you know, there is legitimately a way that it could be, it could replace a human, um, a human coach. Right. So that um, several years ago, the University of Southern California set up, a, um, a, created an AI therapist, uh, so, um, psychotherapist, dealing with with uh, victims of, 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 of soldiers that traumatized and more in particular. Um, and um, then they measured people's reactions to this, how people and, and marginally more people preferred the robot because, because they found it less judgmental. Um, that, and, you know, and, and, and that was several years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, but being able to fake empathy is well within the uh, the, the, the task here. Mm. I'm going to draw, draw a brief dis, um, dis, uh, distinction here. Um, the um, I, I mean, we we talk about intelligence, but humans have got what we call general intelligence. Uh, so we can apply lots of le learning to many different situations independently. AI has what's called weak intelligence. It can do one thing really well or you know, a, a suite of things that its programs do, but it, take it outside of that particular area of expertise and it's and it's useless. Um, and so um, the other big thing to remember is that that creative breakthroughs, um, re really creative breakthroughs, um, as opposed to just putting two things together, come from breaking rules. Um, and as yet, we uh, AIs will always follow the rules and then try and apply them in in different ways, but they can't. They, but they're not set up to break rules. So that's a, a, a distinction. Um, the um, a, a number of studies. McKinsey has done some studies around this, and what they found is that um, when through observation, observation things like reading um, um, medical scans, for example. The AI can already do that much better than humans can. And in many cases, it's being handed over entirely to, to AI with very little human interaction. Um, but um, what the AI can't do is judgment. And so it will tend to make a decision. Some of those decisions are going to be wrong uh, in ways that a human would identify. So the best chess player in the world, player in the world is not a human. 
and it's not an AI, it's a combination of the two. And it's creating those partnerships that seems to be that seems to be where AI is, is being is adding greatest value to the world. Um, the AI can't achieve any insight. It's, it doesn't have a mechanism to do that's only a human um, thing. Um, it can't create meaning. It can't be wise uh, and so forth. But if we look at who's at risk. What AI is able to do best is follow a route, a series of routines. It's it's written into the what you know, it follows it follows a set of processes, rules that it should have. Coaches who are operating at the grow model level, following a process, um, sticking to the rules. First, you do this, then you do that. Oh, we've got we've established the reality. Now let's move on to options. Those those are the coaches who are most at risk. Because the AI can very easily replicate that. Now, um, it's been said and um, or claimed. Um, and I do not know whether it's true or not, that um, some of the coaching platforms are capturing and recording um, the coaching conversations that coaches have with their clients with a, a view towards using that as a, as a data source like chat GTP, same sort of principle you know, um, um, to, uh, to, to educate um, the ideal, so to speak, um, coach. The problem with that is that it's almost impossible to tell unless you can filter out which level of coaching, what level of coaching people are at. Are they a mature level or are they a basic level? The majority of coaches are going to be at a basic level. So the AI is going to, that emerges from this, is going to be one that operates at the very basic level um, um, and maybe occasionally dips into, into slightly higher levels by asking questions that might be a bit more meaningful. Um, but now but, but now we're sort of getting, getting a very... Uh, um, um, uh, we, we're creating a division, if you like, but but that that's where the coaches that cannot rise above this simplistic the simplistic models that they use, they're not they won't be able to compete with this. In fact, they're already they already can't compete with it. It's just not that the AI is not being used that much. Um, the more that we get that, that, that we, we 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 use our humanity, the things that make us human beings, our wisdom and so forth. Um, are, are the, the less risk we're going to have. So when we're into transformational coaching, when we're into developmental mentoring, um, where you where you bring all your wisdom and experience and knowledge, that's unique to you. You can't. Nobody else can. No machine can emulate that. Um, so, so what that really says is that we have to rise above. We need to forget about all the tools and and, and the processes, um, and the coach education needs to focus on being a coach not doing coaching because the doing is something that the ai can do better and make sure we can if we want as much of that doing we could we may actually find ourselves leaving to that so that's the theory um i noticed i noticed there are two or three people with that with their hands up so um before i um um bef bef well let's do, let's talk to them I've, I've, I've put the theory out there and i want to i want to to, to give you a chance to go into breakout rooms and play with it but let's say so let's talk to dane and uh uh uh, Dana and uh, and Ursula, and then we'll um, and then we'll then we'll see if we can break create a breakout room to um, to go and play with some of this stuff. Dane, Dana. Hi, David. Thank you. Um, and apologies for the camera off. Um, I just wanted to raise a point that perhaps has not been discussed as yet, and that's the, the data controls and how that is really creating a barrier to entry and really developing um, the potential use of AI in a way that reflects some of the, the topics and points that have been raised here today. Um, I think in terms of the investment required, uh, the, the data controls, as I understand, are still very much within the hands of the big corporations, um, which form the collaborative that is OpenAI. Um, I'm just curious in terms of anyone's experience or thoughts that they have in this space around that those those data controls. 
um because we can't really achieve much if we don't have um the capability or accessibility to create those guardrails that are necessary um i really like the points that you're making around partnership because that is one form of data control that we can control <laughs> um so yeah just i suppose putting that out there in terms of something that i've been coming up um consistently as a, a, a critical barrier for for development so th thank you for, th for that. I know that the <clears throat> EMCC working group around, around the, 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 these these issues is certainly look, looking at at at, um, at the dominance of the of the big um, um, technology companies of this whole area who seem to be setting the rules and the and, and the pace. Um, and part of the debate that we can certainly have around this is actually. What if all the all the coaching associations came together and said, actually, no, 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 you don't set the rules about how you how, how you use AI in coaching. We do. Um, and um, and if and, and, and if your and if your processes don't fit with our ethical codes and, and, and the practice, that the rules that we say are appropriate for the for, for this profession, then we're basically going to go to advise coaches not to touch it with a barge. Well, and and all those clients out there who would the com corporate clients who might buy it. Now, so there, there is some influence that we can have at the moment because we don't know enough and we haven't got enough levers to we have enough. Um, uh, we don't can't see where the levers are to pull. We haven't been able to do that. Well, I think um, if we don't do that in, um, in in the next 18 months or so, um, I think we're missing a real opportunity. And we may and many of the negative things that we've talked about here are going to happen, which we could potentially prevent, at least in part by actually saying no as a, as coaches these are these are the rules that has that have to be applied uh, but that's a personal opinion um Ursula. thank you very much um i'm a bit puzzled because i'm very interested in this ai um whole topic because it is new and i find it very um discussed very controversial and i also ask myself if it can be used in coaching but uh, for me, coaching is a lot, as you said at the beginning, about presence. And it is a lot about silence. It is a lot about asking questions, but after reflection. And all I hear here is, yes, AI can help us asking questions. It can help us, I don't know, dealing with models. But this whole process, which in coaching is important for relationship building and also for me, at least, important in being in resonance with my coachee. Uh, and this res space of resonance enables intuition and find new uh, solutions that are breaking rules or go beyond uh, what we have been discussing so far, go beyond context or explore the broader context um how does that connect to ai i mean there i can't see any bridge there i can't see any um usefulness <laughs> if i say okay um i i i think i think that's what that's part of the question how, how do we actually work out what's going to be really useful and what's not but i i i'm i Tend to take a lot of what I read with with a, with a pinch of salt because I, I want to see is it, is it is it replicated is it real because we have to ch question everything now. Um, but I did read something a few weeks ago um, that suggested that in Japan there's a whole um, underclass of people no underclass a cl whole class of people um, who um, uh, are much more comfortable um, with in in terms of creating personal relationships with um an artificial reality than with real with 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 real people now you know that's that, that's also quite worrying because if they if, of course we we rely upon the fact that we that as humans we we bring something special but how would we coach or mentor somebody who has that that set that that perspective i don't know um it, it, it's i think there's there, everything here there are more far more questions than there, than there are answers and in many ways, the answers are going to come up, are going to arise only when things go badly wrong. Um, and hopefully by then we can we can start to put them back to, things back together again. 
Um, I'll, I'll just round up with one, one little thing. I wanted to say something about supervision and just get you thinking about that too. Uh, and the, the, the scenario we've written up um, and, and used in a number of papers uh, basically has the coach who's um, taken their AI to, um, to work with a client um, uh, in, into the session with a client. Um, and the, um, the client has given permission for the client's AI to link with the coach's AI. So there's a certain amount of interaction going going on between those um, on a, on on very limited on a limited basis, but the information going back between them. <clears throat> the coach then takes their AI to their supervisor, who also has an AI, and the coach's AI talks to the the the, the um uh, to the supervisor's AI. Um, you can see where all this is going, isn't it? How do you maintain confidentiality of information? Um, what is that? All the places where this could go dreadfully wrong and yet it's already technically feasible to do a lot of this now i don't have any answers um i i i'm a coach and mentor my job is to find questions not not answers um but um so uh so i'm just playing putting this this forward to you so are you, is everybody happy to, to have a have a, a to go off into a breakup and say what really strikes you what what's what what do you want to do next? Or if there's a better question, then ask that one instead. Um, but I don't. But I so I'm trying not to to funnel you too closely down down. But I think to come away, how can you be clearer in your own mind about how you're going to approach this whole issue, this whole issue, um, and um, and find the right kind of of, of partnership. Even if it's just this is a tool that I use, like a kettle or or or, or, a, um, a, a, or a radio, to all the way through to actually this is going to be a thinking aid for me. How do you find the, the right level for you and your practice as it evolves over the next, well, probably quite short period, eighteen months, two years or so? Uh, David, I was uh, referring to the difference between uh, um, the AE, which is able to predict only the past experiences, some known uh, some known patterns, yes. So uh, the IA is giving only something that has already happened and uh, is already uh, known. How can we use the A for creating novelty, creative ways? Um, I think, Besides. yeah, so, so cre creativity is something yeah, that yeah. It, can do, it can do in certain ways. It's not the same way as we are creative. Yeah. So it, it can it can make different combinations of things. So uh, an AI can you, you can have like a um, a crossword puzzle. An AI can very quickly look look at all the potential answers and then select the one that seems most likely to to it. We would come to the answer in a very different way. So it will never think the way that we think. Yeah. So um, we we can't expect it to replicate us. It does something different. Um. And therefore, how do we make that something different that it does useful to ourselves and most importantly to the clients that we work with? Yeah, it's about the human touch. It's about creative from this presence, from this awareness that comes in the moment. At yeah. least this is my, my, my own approach that A can bring, I don't know, some, something that you already know not the human potential and the that deepness. Yes. And so this is the this is the big fallacy in the idea you can create an AI coach. Um because that automatically assumes, because I coach the human being, that, that it's going to you're replicating um the, the human. And you you're taking the human out of the picture and putting a and, and slotting in, in 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 a in an, an art in an AI. Um, that's not never going to be feasible and if and, and the closer you got to and the more you try and do that the more damage you can do yeah. it's about seeing the ai as a very different kind of, of of entity that can support the coach in certain ways and it's defining and confining that role that support role that we're struggling with right now mm. but those coaches who are just administering a process then already the, co the, co the robot can do it better than they can. Yeah, right. 
I would better write the C the uh, the usefulness of the I in the education, for example, in examining persons or this in creating, I don't know, helping students to improve, to yes. make an adjustment to this is what comes useful, at, at least in what I feel that coaching is and the value can bring to people. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, I expect many of you've got many of you've got screenagers, kids walking around like this. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how they see it uh, as compared to us. So, is everybody, everybody happy to go off and, and and take? Let's take fifteen minutes. And yeah, you know, what what what's the big takeaway that you want to to to, to take in in or in the what you need to be thinking, feel you need to be thinking about in order to make sense of all this for yourself and your practice over the over the coming the coming few years. Um, you know, I, I'm, I can't give you any answers. I can simply raise some of the questions and you've raised other issues and questions too. Um, we as, as individuals and as a profession need to be focusing up to these very, very, very clearly and very, very quickly. I love you. <laughs> They're going too fast for me to actually ca catch up with them. Yeah. Um, um, so, wondering about human clumsiness and AI. Yes, yeah. speaking as somebody who's quite dyspraxic. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Mm. What is a human? That's that is a lovely question. This is actually forcing us to reconsider what it means to be a human being. Um. Um. And yeah, John, John has talked about the potential to, to improve access to coaching worldwide across all levels and, and, and industries. Um, and I think that's that's such a wonderful thing if we can do it in a way that's safe and appropriate. Um, many of you know that I, I have this project we've been working on for a long time. We're, we're hoping to get it properly launched next year uh, to get 5, 000, 5 million school age coaches and mentors um, um and um and the but that's just a drop in the ocean compared to you know getting getting um coaching resources of some kind out to people wherever they are the big quality is always going to be how do we raise the how do we ensure the quality of those um so i i there's just loads and loads of so many so many i, I can't um there are, there are absolutely loads. What I would say is that make time to save these. Wait, wait for the wait for the you know, the rush to go. Um, but but at the end you'll see three dots underneath where the chat box is, um, and then you've got save chat. And I absolutely encourage you to save chat because all the good stuff that we've been save, saving and sharing amongst us, um, you'll be able to then keep and reflect on as well. Actually, I can't see safe chat myself, but I know you're going to save it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Three dots and then save chat. No, three dots is this copy, quote, or delete. Uh -huh. You should have save chat. Can anybody else save chat? Is this, are the settings all saved? No, yes. Some mixture of yeses and nos. I'll make sure you get the chat afterwards. I'll add it to the um, mail out afterwards. Don't you worry. We've got you. I can see Tinika's hand up. Um, Tinika, yeah, come on in. Yes, please. I think, you know, I am, um, I think this might be a place for when people talk about scaling, scalability, and scaling coaches, coaching, etc. I've noticed how um, people want everything fast and big and, you know, coaching, coach faster. And, uh, and yet, you know, I've realized that one cannot easily work fast and reflect fast and work deep. Those mm. two for me are separate. Please can we slow down sometimes and actually reflect properly for the first time in your life and go deep and really make more sustain sustainable change, um, more fundamental uh, reflections and changes. So I think for for if, if a client said to me, I, I would like you to use AI, I would be very comfortable to say, you know, I don't think I'm the right coach for you. Because I don't do this kind mm. of go fast, reflect fast, rush along. For me, coaching is something totally different. So maybe at a surface level, skills level, whatever, maybe AI can work. But if you want to work really transformationally, 
and 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 deep. I, I think uh, I'm quite comfortable that I'm not. I don't feel threatened by an AI bot. Thank you. Yeah. But using it afterwards for me, like Ovida, to say what did I miss and how can I actually now step out of my being present and actually look at what's happened. I'm very happy to do that outside before and after the session. Hey, thank you. Uh, th there's an example that I I play with um, in, in to try and get some sort of handle on how we might use this in, in, a, in a sensible way. Um, and it's to do with career planning or career coaching rather, or career, even career, career mentoring. Um, and there's there's a lot of questions that I would ask somebody about their journey, their career journey so far, and their their sense of who they are, um, and the kind of things that they want out of their life and so forth. Now I could spend several hours with somebody really going into depth doing this, and, and have done. Um, but I can see that um, all of those basic questions that I, I would ask could very easily be constructed into um, a series of algorithms which um, which an AI could ask for me and follow up <clears throat> down various paths to make sure that all of those all of those issues were covered and and then the and then work then working with the person as a human being to come back and say okay well I've look, looked at this whole pattern I'd like to delve deeper here would you find it helpful to delve deeper here? Um, let me talk to me about your reasoning, um, why you aren't, why you responded in this way and not that way. And so help the person get that data depth. So I can see some practical ways in which um, certainly <clears throat> as, as a coach, one might find very simple ways in which um, some of the grunt work <clears throat> oh, pardon me, of, of, um, of, of, of coaching, the discovery, the information gathering could be done by an AI. Um, but personally, do I want them to try and help somebody uh, really think through their identity and who they are and where they, and the kind of person they want to become? Not really. But that's me and that's my limitations. So we've got two, two more comments. I think that's probably enough. for going. So, Deborah. Yeah, it's interesting because you basically said what I was going to say. Um, I used to do career coaching. And when people come to me for career coaching, I'm very clear that I don't do career coaching. I do coaching about what is your life's work, yeah. you know? Um, so I was very glad to hear the end of what you're saying. It, it cannot help you kind of find your identity, find your purpose in the world. So uh, yeah, but it would be nice to have someone do the grunt work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, and then Kate, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Um, I've used ChatGPT for a while, and uh, I just want to give a, a point for you to consider. The success of the output of ChatGPT relies heavily on the input that it's given. Mm -hmm. So there's people that are writing books about that and are doing webinars and making money on how to uh, create, how to give the prompts for ChatGPT. So that tells you the, the importance of the prompt. So when we go to coach people, they don't want that on their minds. So I'm I'm less worried about um, people replacing me as a coach with chat GPT or AI because they want to just show up. My The clients don't want to be, they don't want to show up and have to think about the prompt that they need to enter in order to get the best, um, most relevant, um, most advanced output from, from um, AI. They might not know that at first because if they're not familiar with it, um, but that's a point that you could use. If they are not experts at prompts, then they might as well just do a Google search for whatever their issue is and then uh, let you know how that worked out for them because the, um, the output of ChatGPT relies heavily on the prompts. Otherwise, it's the same as just a Google search. So I, I hope that makes you... Um, you know, feel better or, or feel a little more confident or gives you something to talk to clients who are comparing your service to a chat GPT or something like that. Cause it's, it's no comparison. If the, my clients want to just come, they don't want to have to think about how they're showing up. They want to just show up and, and be, be themselves. So I'm sure that's the same for yours. So I hope that's helpful. Thank, thank you. Yeah. So we, 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 let me, let me leave you with, 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 
one distinction that um, works for me, and that is for, for uh, with with an AI, the com the, the the learning conversation that the, the learning that happens happens during the interchange between the AI and the person. With coaching and mentoring and supervision, a heck of a lot of the learning takes place in the reflections that mm. they do afterwards. And you can't replicate that. So there are, so, so th I think we're beginning to tease out these distinctions. Um, and it's, it's a fascinating journey because <clears throat> in discovering more about AI, we have to discover more about ourselves. Um, can't be a bad thing. That's quite a reassuring note to end on, I think, David. But but, but before before um, before we all leave this this part, I mean, it, it was it was you know the, the comments were coming too fast to read them individually, and but from the discussions that we've had today and what you've heard today, is there anything that you yourself are going to take forward that didn't occur to you before this, David? Oh, I, I think um, what it's what is really re re reinforced for me is 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 the need to engage a very wide spectrum um, of, of 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 people in this this, this world that, that we have, uh, and not just the coaches but clients too. Of course, we 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 haven't even spoke about what do they want and what do they need from us. So we've got a lot of work to do. That's the big uh, I think the big takeaway, and not that much time to do it in. Mm. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody here for really engaging so well in this dialogue. It's um, It's been eye opening. It really has. And it's been wonderful to spend this time with you. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, lovely to engage with you all again. As I said at the beginning, I'm not trying to present myself as an expert here. I'm simply curious, like you, about how, what's happening here and how can we make the best of this mixed opportunity and threat. <laughs>